Do Prahy ho doprovodil zastupující říšský protektor SS Obergruppenführer generál policie Heidi. Na čestném nádvoří hradu ho uvítal SS Gruppenführer the Second World War is considered the most devastating military conflict of the 20th century, marking a fundamental turning point in world history. In this scenario, the major powers clashed, forming strategic alliances that reshaped international affairs in various aspects. In those conditions, Hitler counted on one of his closest associates, Heinrich Himmler. Many wonder what would have happened if this sinister figure had continued under the orbit of the Nazi Chancellor, inheriting the power of his deceased leader. Some experts argue that Himmler would have negotiated a defeat with the Allies in exchange for immunity, given his political and accommodating profile. On the contrary, other scholars envision an alternative scenario in which Hitler's legacy would have continued in the hands of his lieutenant in a fanatical manner, altering the course of history forever. What would the political, social, economic, and even religious order be like today if the Third Reich had changed the destiny of the Second World War? This question leads us to imagine a scenario where the fundamental values of democracy, freedom, and equality could have been replaced by a totalitarian and racist vision. All these speculations and hypotheses will be addressed in today's video, so don't move away from the screen. Welcome once again to Military History. Heinrich Himmler was a pivotal figure in the establishment of Nazi Germany, becoming a shadowy and complex character in contemporary history. Born on October 7, 1900, Himmler played a fundamental role as the architect of the concentration camp system and as the leader of the Schutzstaffel, better known by its chilling acronym SS. From his early years, Himmler showed an inclination towards the nationalist and racist ideas that would characterize the Nazi regime. In 1929, he joined Hitler's party, becoming a vital pillar in the creation of the SS, an organization initially conceived as the Fuhrer's personal escort. But under his leadership, it expanded to become an influential force in the regime's repression machinery. The feared organization ended up becoming a task force dedicated to tracking down and exterminating all enemies of the totalitarian regime that prevailed in the German country. This paramilitary body led millions of victims to their graves, including Jews and individuals deemed to weaken the superior race. Let's hear this character speak about German dissidents. Das Entsetzliche heute in Deutschland ist, dass die Frauen nicht mehr Mütter sein wollen. Wären wir noch so, wie die alten Germanen mit ihren Sitten und ihren gesunden Einrichtungen waren, ein königliches Geschlecht unter den Menschen. As Reichsführer SS, that is, the leader of the SS, Himmler oversaw the implementation of what is historically known as the Final Solution, a euphemistic term for the systematic genocide of Jews, Roma, and any individual considered scum by the authorities during the Holocaust. He was the chief architect of this atrocity, meticulously planning and executing the methodical elimination of entire communities. His role in the Holocaust is as central as it is repulsive. His most bloody and cruel tasks included the creation and management of extermination camps, such as Auschwitz, where millions of people were subjected to forced labor, atrocious medical experiments, and ultimately death in gas chambers or through cruel firing squads. Himmler was directly responsible for the logistics and coordination of this machinery of murder, leaving an indelible mark of his cruelty on history. The deaths of all Holocaust victims weighed heavily on his shoulders. His fanatical vision and devotion to the Nazi ideal led him to implement draconian measures of control and repression in the camps, perpetuating a reign of terror that left millions of innocents defenseless. Himmler also played a central role in the creation and management of surveillance and exercise systems in concentration camps. The twisted idea of the Nazi officer was to make the captivity of prisoners useful to the Reich. In this way, he subjected millions of people to his most Machiavellian desires for torture, slavery, and ultimately death, all for the benefit of his beloved Germany. His influence extended to the sphere of culture and education, seeking to impose Nazi ideology in all aspects of society. 
His indoctrination idea aimed to generate a race of little Aryan children who would perpetuate the Nazi ideology of their Fuhrer for centuries to come. However, the downfall of Nazi Germany in 1945 would mark the end of Heinrich Himmler's sinister career. Stripped of his powers and positions due to alleged betrayal of Adolf Hitler himself, the story of the Nazi lieutenant seemed to fade definitively. At this precise point in the narrative, an interesting possibility arises on which some specialists have speculated. What would have happened if Himmler had retained his command and authority until the end of the war? Would it have been the same fate as Hitler's or would it have been different? Let's venture into these suppositions in search of an answer. When Heinrich Himmler foresaw Germany's imminent defeat as the end of the Second World War scenario, he desperately tried to safeguard his wife and daughter, and ultimately himself. Despite having formed a second family in Berlin with his then-lover, he took measures to ensure the safety of Gudrun, his daughter, and his official wife, Marga. He issued a special order to an SS commando to pick them up from the family residence in Bavaria and take them to a safe location in Tyrol. The location remained secret, except for Himmler and his closest associates. However, three weeks later, the child and the woman would be apprehended by American soldiers and taken as prisoners of war. The desperate attempt by Himmler to ensure his survival and that of his loved ones is revealed in the details of his final actions. Historians, drawing on sources from Western archives, have accurately reconstructed the Nazi leader's last days. A general consensus has been forged around Himmler's maneuvers to protect himself, the circumstances of his arrest, and his subsequent tragic demise. In his final days, the head of the SS, aware that his political influence was waning after Hitler's downfall, desperately sought ways to secure his place in the post-war era. In early 1945, he issued the order to partially halt the mass extermination of Jews and engaged in negotiations with representatives of international organizations to sell tens of thousands of Hungarian Jews. But that was not the only deal he made without his leader's consent. In the spring of 1945, the German country was ravaged by continuous British bombings. It was then that the Swedish Red Cross unleashed an impressive rescue operation aimed at liberating prisoners from German Nazi concentration camps. Upon learning of this humanitarian initiative, the British demanded that all involved buses be painted white, with the Swedish flag on the sides and the Red Cross on the roof. This measure would facilitate their identification from the air and thus the operation was named White Buses. In mid-February 1945, the Vice President of the Swedish Red Cross, Folke Bernadotte, embarked on delicate negotiations with Heinrich Himmler, who at that time held the important position of Minister of the Interior of Germany and head of the Gestapo. The curious and terrible aspect of these negotiations is that they were all conducted in secret, behind the back of Adolf Hitler himself, who surely would have obstructed the operation if he had found out. The hatred towards Jews was visceral, as revealed by this testimony from an Auschwitz SS guard. And if you ask yourself if this is really necessary, you say to yourself, yes, of course. We've been told that these are our enemies and there is a war on. There are different theories as to why the Reichsfuhrer SS made the risky decision not to tell his political leader anything. The first, because he feared what he and his family might suffer if Germany lost the war, as indeed happened. The second, because he was trying to gain more power and overthrow his Fuhrer. We will discuss the second option later in the video. At the beginning of the negotiations, Himmler was reluctant to release the prisoners. However, he eventually agreed to gather Scandinavian captives at the Neungam camp near Hamburg, only the elderly, the sick, and mothers from Norway and Denmark were allowed to leave Germany. Finally, Bernadotte and Himmler met four more times, and after each meeting, the Swedish Red Cross obtained permission to rescue more prisoners from various camps. In the last meeting, which took place on the night of April 21st, Swedish negotiator Norbert Masur 
representing the World Jewish Congress, was also allowed to meet with Himmler. Masur's special mission was to secure the release of as many Jews as possible. After what would be the final meeting between Bernadotte and Himmler, the Nazi leader granted permission for the Swedish organization to take as many prisoners as they wished. The rescue operation concluded on May 1, 1945, just before the end of the war. However, the Swedish Red Cross continued its efforts, rescuing about 10,000 more people during the spring and summer in Sweden. In total, around 15,000 people were liberated from Nazi concentration camps thanks to this remarkable and risky humanitarian enterprise. It is essential to note that none of this would have been possible without the political maneuvering and blatant betrayal of Hitler by Himmler. Acting behind his Fuhrer's back, the leader of the SS also explored the possibility of achieving a peace agreement with the Allies. When Hitler discovered his subordinates' negotiations with the Allied forces, he flew into a rage. Here is where we can begin the speculative essay. The one who told the German Chancellor that his subordinate had openly betrayed him was the Swedish diplomat Folke Bernadotte, who had negotiated with Himmler. The real reasons for the humanitarian figure's gesture are unknown, but some suppose he attempted to harm the beast from within by sowing discord among its ranks, and he succeeded. The Fuhrer was furious and stripped Himmler of all his positions, forbidding him from returning to the bunker and forever expelling him from the party. If Hitler hadn't found out about the backstabbing by his Minister of the Interior, perhaps the course of the war would have been different. Remember that in the chain of command, the one who should succeed Hitler in case of his death was Himmler himself. For that reason, there is speculation that given the more negotiable and conciliatory profile of the Reichsfuhrer SS, it would have resulted in a much less bloody end to the war than the assault on Berlin. Perhaps lives of soldiers and civilians could have been saved. This doesn't negate the fact that the character was a sinister being, relying on his oratory skills to achieve these dark agreements. However, reality was different, and Himmler's end was that of a cowardly traitor. With few options to choose from after the Fuhrer had stripped him of his power, Himmler chose to flee. He disguised himself as a civilian, bandaged one eye, and embarked on a dangerous journey for two weeks through northern Germany, accompanied by his aides, Macher and Grothmann. He carried false documents adopting the identity of a Gestapo military officer. He carried with him a vial of cyanide as a last resort in case of extreme emergency. On the bright morning of May 21, 1945, a British patrol and two Soviet soldiers ventured to inspect the Minestad area. At 7 p.m., while the British soldiers enjoyed a well-deserved break drinking coffee, the Soviet soldiers continued their patrol. It was then that they detained three suspicious Germans escorted them to the village and handed them over to the British. Initially, the detainees spent two days without being disturbed, but everything would change on May 23rd when one of them claimed to be Heinrich Himmler and demanded to speak with the commanding officer. The information provided by Himmler surprisingly matched the data held by the British commander. Biographical details, distinctive features, Nazi party affiliation number, and SS membership card. There was no doubt. The leader of the paramilitary force was taken to a new interrogation before the counterintelligence command of the British Second Army in Lüneburg. During the body search, in the presence of Colonel Murphy, Himmler feared what might happen to him and took a drastic way out. He broke the cyanide vial he carried with him against his teeth and collapsed to the ground. Barely half a minute later, his eyes had turned opaque indicating the death of the Nazi leader. No one dared to move the body until the arrival of Red Army officers and military correspondents who took photographs. But what if Himmler not only hadn't betrayed Hitler, but rather had tried to push the Nazi ideology as far as possible to the point of winning the war? As the Allies advanced victoriously in Europe, 
and the Soviets closed in on Berlin at the end of the Second World War, the Führer found himself cornered in his underground bunker in the German capital. On April 30, 1945, Hitler made a decision that would have historical consequences. In the company of Eva Braun, his newly declared wife, the Führer opted for side to avoid the humiliation of defeat and capture. The news of Hitler's death reverberated globally, symbolizing the fall of a leader who embodied Nazi brutality and intolerance. This is London calling. Here is a news flash. The German radio has just announced that Hitler is dead. I repeat that. The German radio has just announced that Hitler is dead. Here is precisely where a space opens up to speculate a supposition that would have profoundly altered the course of events. Let's imagine that Himmler hadn't deceived the Chancellor. On the contrary, let's conjecture that the leader of the SS had remained a loyal vassal until the end. In that case, he would continue to hold his command, his power, and, with Hitler's death, he would be automatically declared the new Führer of the Reich. There are historians who speculate that, in this scenario, the morale of German troops and civilians could have been boosted by new leadership, leading them to unexpectedly win the war against the Allies. In this way, modern history as we know it would have changed forever. In the hypothetical scenario of a Nazi victory led by Himmler at the end of the Second World War, the world would face a drastic reconfiguration of its geopolitical and cultural order. Beyond the obvious consequences such as mass exiles and the abolition of fundamental rights for anyone not considered Aryan on the planet, it is possible to imagine other significant transformations led by the leader of the SS. In this alternative scenario, the United States would not have reached the superpower status it holds today. Instead, Germany would emerge as the dominant country, leading the international landscape. Tensions between Germany and the United States would be constant, but German supremacy could have prevailed over American attempts to challenge the empire of the new and shining Führer. In this scenario, Germany and Japan would have emerged as undisputed world superpowers, while Italy and Spain would also have experienced significant ascension, consolidating themselves as dominant nations in the international economic sphere. Another global fact would be that German could have become one of the most spoken languages in the world. With the possible conquest of Great Britain and France, this language would have spread to their colonies, even challenging Chinese or Hindi on an unprecedented demographic scale. Decolonization would have been slower, and some regions might have remained as dominated peoples until later periods. In terms of ideology, Nazism would have further exacerbated the institutionalization of racism the seed of hatred and violence, cultivated by Hitler in the Third Reich and ultimately consolidated as a world order in this fictional scenario by Himmler, would have expanded beyond the Aryan race. The crucial question would be to what extent the Nazis would have taken their ideology of the superior race, influencing migration flows and determining cultural crossings in the 20th century. And an even more chilling question, would they continue exterminating cultures they considered inferior once the conflict ended? An SS guard recounts what the order from Himmler was like at the time. The order said they're to be shot. And for me, that was binding. This exercise in historical speculation reveals how a Nazi victory led by Himmler would have left a radically different legacy than what we know today, marking a turning point in history that would profoundly alter our present and future. Similarly, a more orderly and politically orchestrated surrender commanded by the Reichsführer SS could have also opened the door to a less bloody end to the Second World War, generating less pronounced friction between Germany and the Allied world. Reflecting on these possibilities is interesting to understand the fragility of peace and global stability. Exploring these what-if scenarios offers a unique perspective to try to understand the importance of individuals in history. Heinrich Himmler's life was marked by boundless intelligence and ruthlessness, which made him one of the most significant figures in the Reich. 
Such was his ambition and pursuit of maintaining power that he betrayed all the inhumane banners for which so much innocent blood had been shed. This concludes today's speculative video. We thank you for staying until the end and look forward to seeing you in the next installments of Military History.